this is TM Fitness. Just doing this quick live video to explain something about a popular core exercise that I see used a lot on social media called the Russian twist. I see it a lot and I see it done wrong a lot. So this is what the Russian twist looks like. You can do it with the feet on the floor. You can do it with the feet elevated. Now, before I get into the technicalities of the exercise, let me uh, give you a little bit of uh, context and background here. So everybody has different ranges of motion available to, to them. Uh, what you see somebody doing online might not be what you're capable of doing. Their body's different to yours, their biomechanics are different to yours. Particularly when you see like these, uh, these very, very good, very fit yogis and Pilates instructors with crazy ranges of motion. It's, it's taken them years to get to that stage and some of them are hypermobile to begin with, which is why they're good at that and that's why they gravitate towards that. Um, in my experience, a lot of yogis would benefit from doing strength training more than they would from doing yoga because mobility isn't their, isn't their problem. Strength and stability might be. Um, that's not to say that yoga's bad, yoga's great, but I'm digressing. So the Russian twist. If, like me, you have a history of back injuries and lower back pain, uh, certain movements and exercises can trigger more pain. So over the years, I've learned what my pain triggers are. And I know that because I've always had stiffness in the mid spine, my mid thoracic in particular is very stiff. I have to work daily on that mobility. I have to mobilize it every day to keep it uh, mobile. Otherwise my lower back stiffens up and tightens up because it's doing the brunt of the work. The lower back has a lot greater range of motion in terms of flexion, extension and rotation than, than the mid spine. It's after the neck, probably the second most mobile part of the spine. And that's the problem with lower back pain is that if you have stiffness in the mid spine and stiffness and weakness in the hips, your lower back is going to do more of the work and then it gets tight and tense and sore. So, as I say, I, I'm aware of this. So I know what movements and uh, positions and postures trigger my pain so I avoid those for the most part. Uh, I'm always aware of alignment and posture during movement. Uh, it's not to say that posture should be optimal or that there's any such thing as optimal or perfect posture because there isn't but just being aware of that alignment and balance of movement through movements that you're doing on a daily basis not just in the gym but when you're cooking, cleaning, shopping etc. Um, so I've cleaned those things up, spine hygiene, by, by removing some of those uh, pain triggers and, uh, and being aware of the ranges of motion that are available to me and working within those available ranges. Uh, in addition to that, as I say, I've worked on mobilising the mid-spine, mobilising the hips and increasing hip power because power production through the hips is, uh, or a lack of, is one of the things that will lead to compensation and overworking of the lower back. Uh, and then strength, I've got a lot stronger over the last uh, couple of years and my back pain now is as good as it's ever been. My strength is as good as it's ever been. My fitness is as good as it's ever been. Uh, I feel that at, you know, at 47, I am fitter and stronger and more mobile than I've ever been in my life. And that's entirely down to uh, just awareness and fitness training and kettlebells in particular. So getting back to, um, to the Russian twist, it's a rotational movement, so we're rotating the core. You need to create stiffness in the core, uh, so your abdominals need to be stiff. The Valsalva manoeuvre, you take a deep inhale and then you brace like you're protecting yourself from a punch. The rotation is generated by the obliques, the internal and external obliques will rotate your torso. Now, the mistake that I see a lot of people making when they do Russian twist is going all the way around to the floor. For a lot of people, that's too great a range of motion. And I'll tell you why. As soon as you put the weight down, you're taking tension out of the target area. So you no longer, you no longer have as much tension uh, through the muscles of the, the, the core. When I say core, I'm talking about that midsection here, the abdominals, the obliques in particular. As soon as you put it down, you lose that tension. Then when you pick it up, it's the lower back that engages. So 
if you, like me, you have a history of lower back issues and you're doing an exercise like this, it's likely to trigger some pain or some stiffness or tightness. It might tighten up over the next day or two after doing it. So you've got to be aware of limiting that range of motion. So instead of going all the way to the floor, you go from hip to hip. So you tighten the, the abs nice and tight. Keep your chest elevated armpits tight like you're holding oranges under your armpits and you rotate from one hip to the next or when I say hip I actually mean your iliac crest the top of the pelvis here the bony part the top of the pelvis so you're going from one side of the pelvis to the other keeping that tension in the abdomen keeping the chest as elevated as you can there's going to be some flexion there but not a lot now you make it harder by bringing the feet up you need to make sure that you're Bracing, and then you rotate, and there's a little bit more rotation, and you feel it a little bit more through the mid back. As soon as you start going all the way round, that's when you start to load up the lower back. And if you don't have a healthy lower back to begin with, you're going to do yourself a mischief. And if you do currently have a, a, a healthy back, but you don't have a strong back because you haven't been doing a lot of, of heavy lifting, then is, there's a possibility that you might cause some issues for yourself. Uh, the reduced range of motion, so it, it, with a lot of exercises, sometimes less is more. And in this case, doing it that way, rather than all the way to the floor, you're maintaining time under tension, mechanical load through the, the target muscles, which is those muscles around the, the midsection, so they get more benefit than if you're putting the weight down every time and overextending and over-rotating yourself. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you've learned something. If you've got any questions, put them in the box below and I will catch you later.